so uh, mirza asks me what is destination net so mirza have you understood the different types of other net that we did that is static dynamic okay understood that yeah. yes okay so there is a question like what is destination net see in this asa you know when there was older version 8.2 there were different different names coming in like you know sometime the name was policy net sometime the name was identity net sometime the name was destination net sometime the name was uh, uh like you know uh, net zero like that okay but ultimately uh, see these names are now being changed but still uh, destination net is something like you know i'll tell you exactly what it is uh, with the help of the diagram Uh, because see, in the last uh, session we did uh, uh, the NAT session, what we did was static NAT. It was simple for servers where we created two servers. Can you see the screen, all of you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there were two servers, ten one one two, located in DMZ, and then we NATed with a single public IP, and then people started visiting this IP. from outside that is from internet and they started accessing this for telnet or http whatever then we did dynamic net in dynamic net you have options of many to many many to few many to one many to interface i showed you everything like i showed you many to few many to one many to interface many to many is not possible because suppose you have 254 users 254 ip addresses for dynamic see dynamic net is like the user is not important user is going actually outside nobody is coming on that particular user no user is visiting internet so he should get natted before visiting internet he should get natted or mapped with some public ip address so that when he visits internet uh, he doesn't carry the private ip that is not allowed also according to rfc 1381 or 1318 uh, so uh, basically uh, that was dynamic net so in dynamic net they said why to waste ip addresses many to few also is not necessary you can go for many to one and many to one is also not necessary you can go for many to interface but uh, on routers we used to do overload command to see that this net get converted into pad that is port address translation so whenever you have many to few your net fails whenever you have many to one your net fails whenever you have many to interface your net fails because see you don't have sufficient ip addresses to get mapped with the lan users so then my router was helpless so we used to say to him that overload so he immediately start doing what pad port address translation whatever the machine takes a source port unique source port he used to map it with some again new uh i remember in uh, the first time when AS, they started asa they used to give some number from starting from 1024 like if if the source port is ta taken like that 388 something like that my asa will always give 1024 then the second one come my asa will give 1025 so my asa was fixed like you know i am going to give 1024 1025 1026 1026 then afterwards when they change the is they say why to give 1024 and 1025 let that that same 388 or whatever they are coming with they are it is unique only you know why again asa has to translate it with some number again some uh, he has to maintain the table so let him take the same port because all the ports are unique so if all those ports are unique let he take the same ports and go go ahead okay so in the next uh, like till now uh, the asa will always carry the same port in the mapped port that is whatever port they are carrying unique port he will carry the same as a map port and then he will send it them to okay so many to one many to few many to interface was definitely in asa this good thing about asa is that uh, he never you don't have to do overload and all it will work fine then i showed you dynamic net uh, uh, sorry uh, i showed you port redirection like you know you have multiple servers you can map them with a single ip address and you can translate them according to the port numbers okay now the question is what is destination net so destination net if you see the diagram it's like you know what happens if there is a branch user who want to visit this fellow that is r3 
See, R three belongs to the land, and R three is a land user. So, what kind of netting you have done on ASA dynamic net? But in dynamic net, what happens? He is definitely going with some. Suppose you have done many to few. So, what will happen? He will always take some new IP and go out. There is no fixed IP, and fixed IP normally you do it for. Uh, Servers, no. You always map them with a fixed IP. That is why when you say show XLED, you will see your IP is available. That the map type is available. But in dynamic, we never do that. Okay, you can do it for uh, a particular user. So in mm -hmm. this case also, when we are doing for a particular user as a special case, like when R7 want to visit R3, R7 want to visit R3 on a particular IP address. Okay. And that IP address has to be fixed. Like you know, this is the fixed IP. Okay. See, you must be thinking that I can do it with static also. No, in dynamic only. If I want to do destination NAT, okay, definitely the keyword will be static only because here, see the term though though it is a LAN user, and I am trying to, you know, I am trying to uh, translate it with a static IP. But then, see, the concept is what where you do static IP, you do static uh, NAT. Basically, you do it for servers. But this fellow R three is not a server. So when you translate your R three, which is a LAN user, to a particular say some IP, public IP, which can be reachable through internet by a branch host through internet. Branch host want to visit this particular server for some resources. Okay. Though he is not a server, he is a private host, or you can say he is a LAN host. Then this this kind of NAT will be like a destination NAT. Okay, okay, uh, Mirza. Now how are you going to do that? Like you know, so definitely the command is same. Like you are going to create an object where you are going to specify the host, that is who is the host, and then you are going to specify that host, and then you are going to tell where is this host. So. Initially, when we used to do static net, we used to say DMZ and outside. Now here we are going to say inside and outside, and then you are going to do static keyword, and then you are going to specify that what you have to, what you used to do in static net, same funda. Only thing is, you are doing it for the LAN user. Okay, others might be following like he, others might be following dynamic net for this particular thing, but only this R three is using this thing. Okay, so let's see. We'll do this. Uh, uh, like, let's see how how we are going to do that. Okay, so uh, show run. Uh, I took one more uh, this thing lab. No, so I lost the this thing configuration. Wait, I have the configuration with me. So I'll just paste it. Okay. Config T. Host name. Private host. 
interface is 0 by 0 IP address 192.168.10.2 no shut IP default gateway 192.168.10.1 no IP routing object network some name ten dot two where he is Where is that? Keyboard gone. So static. Some IP address. So fifteen. What is the command? One minute. Huh? show run object net inside outside static
so x select access list permit out dash in permit any to come on any to come on object private host access group config t enable secret cisco line with ui04 password cisco transport input telnet ssh login local username admin privilege password twenty dot one down dot fifteen one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot So access list. Then you. Hello. So this is destination net. Because see here, what happened? ASA is sending the traffic of this translated on a particular host, though he is a LAN host. Okay. It's similar to static net only. Only thing is like you know they uh, they made it like if you have a special requirement, then instead of doing dynamic net of many to one or many to interface you can do like that you can reserve or preserve this host only for accessing a particular service and you can do destination net. got it so yes Whenever in access list that you mention yeah any to the ho any to host i mean instead of that we can make it particular host yeah, like yeah, yeah particular mm -hmm. particular yes 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 you can specify i just wanted to make it faster so i just said tcp any and i said private host if that you have to mention uh, this you have to mention suppose if i uh, remove this suppose uh, see this if i say no and then if i say access list just see out dash in permit tcp you mean to say i want only this particular host should access okay where say i say 20.1.10 though it is a translated ip so i'm telling that anybody asks for 20.1.1.10 that also for a uh, telnet access you allow him okay initially you are telling the source is 172.16.10.2 specific and destination is 20.1.1.10 which is the translated ip firewall knows about this translated ip okay so when somebody comes him asking 21 one day he's telling he's telling now no more 10.2 is there 
that ten dot two has become now twenty one one ten. So when I say show access list, you see he is showing you. This is there. But now the problem is, see. show access list this is not working though he is doing what he is asking him for this and you already told him in the excelet that this fellow is being translated to this fellow this was working in earlier versions but now they made it strict like you know you cannot do that so we need to give the the one okay. private ip Yeah, no, no, no. We need to give object only. Object only. Let's see with the private IP. Wait, huh? it should not normally it should not work you need to call the object basically that is the best practice instead of specifying the private because that that person is trying to hit what 20 no doubt he is see in this case what he is doing no proxy r there is a term called proxy r sayed okay what is proxy r you are asking for 192168 10 Uh, sorry, one ninety two one six eight ten dot two. But see, you are asking for twenty dot one dot one dot ten. Okay. Now, when the this thing reaches here, okay. See, one seventy two is asking what twenty one one ten. So he knows who is twenty one one ten because you have done the static translation. So he allowed it, but he is doing what he is. Doing a proxy R, like you know, you are telling him twenty one one ten, and then he looks into the NAT table. Okay, who is twenty one one ten? Okay, twenty one one ten is actually one ninety two one sixty eight ten dot two. So I'm going to take this convergence, or you can say, uh, translating your public into what again private. But best practices instead of giving the specific IP, because see, in object. you might call more uh, networks also na no? because here you are mentioning individual ip like i showed you an no, object group object group is more powerful than individual access list so it is better you call what object rather than individual ip and when you are mentioning individual ip that is 21110 it is not accepting theek hai matlab he is accepting 192168102 but this is not the correct way instead of that you should mention the object that we did it earlier
when you remove the statement access group goes away again you have to type okay okay now in this why this line is coming i don't know now in this you have another type of nat we normally in technical terms we call it uh, twice nat okay now this is also one of the kind of a nat i'll tell you what exactly it is different translation depending on the destination like for example if you see here Uh, we did the topic VLAN, okay. So we have two different uh, VLANs, like thirty and forty. That means two different type of servers, okay. Or forget, we have only one server. Suppose R five, and there are two different hosts, or suppose one host only. That is R three. Now this R three try to access R five, okay. If you try to access R5, ASA is going to translate him with some IP, and when he try to uh, uh, access R6, ASA will translate into some another IP. That means single host getting translated with because last time I told you, you know policy net. Policy net is something like you know you trying to access a particular server, okay. or you trying to access a particular server and he wants you to send it from a particular isp only and that particular isp public ip address might differ with the another public ip address of another isp so he know that if this is the source say r3 is the source and this is the destination that is r5 is the destination i should translate him with this particular ip address and if this is the source and the destination is r6 i should translate him with another ip address that is called policy net or you can say twice net you can see i told you know the things are change earlier we used to have identity net net zero okay because see i'll tell you what is the history behind that net in the beginning when they came out with firewall no they said we will keep net compulsory on firewall that means without 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 net you cannot go for any configuration that means you have to compulsorily nat first or do nat on firewall and then you do policies that means like initially when i started my asa i never did nat first i did basic configuration then i showed you policies then i showed you object then i showed you redundant interface then i showed you vlan so all those topics went and then finally after some topics i showed you nat but when i go way back say 10 years back when i used to teach firewall asa or pix firewall net was compulsory that means the first topic that i have to take is what basic addressing and then net because without net you cannot move forward but then there was lot of complaints huh? what is this man we have already done net on as uh, our routers or router perimeter router and then you are telling us to again do nat on asa that means we have to remove that nat because why we should go for two times nat okay so inst instead of doing two times nat we will go for once only no either on asa or on router why you want us to do nat compulsorily on a particular firewall so they said okay we'll do one thing we'll make it flexible so they said no don't no need to do nat on asa you can do anywhere else like on router and you can manage it but then some people say no now we are 
placing our ASA in front of internet, and we don't want to do NAT on router. We don't want him to do NAT. We want ASA only should do the translation. So they said, "Ki how we are going to tell my ASA now? You have to do that. So either by configuring NAT or telling them don't allow any traffic to go out without NAT. That means." whatever this asa is facing in front of him in the outside direction is definitely internet so whenever the traffic is exiting out from asa it should get nat compulsorily because there is no other way if they are exiting the firewall in front of them there is an isp so that was with one single command called nat control so we used to do nat control and the whole asa is to block all the traffic initially to go out and not only to go out in fact if we do nat control even r3 r4 cannot access r5 r6 okay <laughs> so again there is a problem because one command is controlling or is telling asa that don't do nat uh, sorry don't allow any traffic to move from any zone to any zone that means they should not move from inside to dmz also and inside to outside so again there is a problem if you are doing net control on asa traffic cannot move outside also traffic cannot move on and at any other interface also hmm. blocked then they made out a command call okay okay then this is baseless here if i want to go from my home to office i need to change i need to be formal so i need to wear trouser a nice pair of uh, formal shoes shirt tie blazer whatever what is the dress code of my company i have to wear because i cannot go without that formals so definitely when you are going from inside to outside that is on internet you have to get yourself net but what about if you are going from bedroom to living room why you want dress code from bedroom to living room why you want dress code it is your own house you can go as it is na <laughs> so there is no sense in controlling the traffic from multiple interface so again we used to do nat zero to disable the uh, the thing there were a lot of confusion again then they change it in 8.4 up till now in 9.6 they change they change it um, uh to with different uh, like object okay so i told you now the names change like many time people is here you did this destination net you did policy net so i i tell you that you know the terms might be differing like many will tell you have you done port redirection or have you done uh, server getting mapped with a single ip like you know so it depends you might be confused are um, we didn't do it no actually you did it but the things are there might be multiple names which are older names like identity net destination net or you can say no doubt they might be carried in the new versions also but try to understand uh, it's like that but anyway i'll cover everything okay so r3 and r4 or r3 so i i told you know what was the requirement in those days like now also when you want to visit a particular server or particular branch from a particular source so source is one that is lan but destination varies like you know either you are going to branch 1 or branch 2 if you are going to branch 1 i want a particular ip address to be getted mapped if you are going to branch 2 i want the traffic of same lan should go via isp2 and should get natted with some other ip that is mapped with some other ip so there might be you know change of environment but the concept should remain same like how we will do that a single user or a single lan trying to visit multiple so in this diagram what i did i made it like that a single user trying to visit server 1 or server 2 okay server 1 he should get nat with some other ip and is visiting some server, server to he should get nat with some other ip okay like that question is what if single user trying to visit server 1 he should 
get NAT with some other IP, and this fellow should get with some other IP. If he's visiting, okay. So that is like again, you are giving instruction to whom? To ASA. You are telling him, boss, if this is the source or this is a single source that is R three. If he comes to you and he tells you that I am going to this particular server or this particular branch, then you should do this way. If this R three comes to you and tells you that I am going to branch two, you should do this way. So same thing, we will do it in this scenario by saying, this is the source, and if we try to visit server one, we should get nated with this particular IP. If he's going to server two, he should get nated with this particular IP. So already the setup is ready. Of R three is already your this thing. We'll take R four because R three. Okay, so this is my post. Say LAN PC. This is my server. So there are two servers now. Let it boot. So both the servers are able to ping ASA.
we want to make land pc 3 so is 3 show run object server 1 so run object So you created one LAN PC, server one, server two, then object, network, map, IP, say host 20.1.1.50. Let me see what I've done. Android zero. Okay. Not inside to DMZ source command is a little bit missing dynamic then the name of the object what was the name of the object that we created land PC Then map type e. Okay. Destination static. The object we created for server. same okay. so what was the command i gave see here insight is the user is trying to visit dmz source is what dynamic lan pc is a lan pc mapped ip what is mapped ip lan pc is the object who is the source actually the lan pc that is 192.168.10.3 he will get translated with the map type what was that map 211150 i think yeah 50 destination server 1 and translation also server 1 okay let's see and what happened to this is up for telnet 10 dot 1 dot 1 dot 10 so excellent who is the server who is the source 10 dot 3 where is visiting 20 dot 1 dot 1 dot 50 
सो एक्सलेट सो सी ओ एन एन डिटेल हु इज विजिटिंग टेन डॉट थ्री ट्राइंग टू विजिट टेन डॉट वन डॉट वन डॉट टेन लेट सी वॉट दिस रोअर इज सींग दिस कम यर आर वन गो यर ये से कम यर थ्री फोर फाइव and 6 for cisco enable cisco so when i go on r5 and say who see is telling 20.1.1.50 visited actually this server is Uh, this ip is 10.3 so he is telling who visited 20.1.1.50 so the requirement is that asa should translate r3 when is visiting r5 with 20.1.1.10 so asa is following the instruction that is policy you can call it policy net also now we'll give him another instruction for the same user okay so we can make use of the existing object but we need to create two more object we can keep this object intact but now we need to create one more object already we have created for server and for this okay so we need to say nat inside dmz source dynamic what is the name of the object same lan pc okay map ip2 okay destination static who is that fellow server 2 and you want to keep it the translation also you want to keep it same so excellent let can this guy there check it on r6 same user two different location same user two different location following two different translation you can call it as twice net also normally the new term is what dynamic twice pat also you can say here what we are doing we are sending one particular source to two different servers you can do that with different port also at present we are not sending him with different requirement we are sending him with a requirement of two different location or see i showed you with the existing diagram you can now plan it with you, you know the trick what exactly my asa can do if it is a policy net or a twice net why it is called twice net there is there's a new term twice net was not there in earlier Uh, this thing yes yes earlier it was policy net what what is the meaning of policy i am telling my asa boss when r3 comes who is a single source or my whole lan comes who is a single source and if he tells me that he want to visit r7 you can do it with this scenario also okay if we want to visit r7 then see that you translate him with this particular ip address that is 20 when he try to come See, suppose AS is having one more parallel uh, uh, link with router, and he is going with some other ISP. You can say, or you can put one more host here, R8. Like what I did here, I place two server. I can do it with two branch server also. That is, I can do it with outside server also. So if this is the source 
or this is the source that is the whole land and if this is the destination then go via this isp and if this is the source and this is the destination then go via this isp so when you change the isp when you change the isp the public ip also changes because see if this this is some x company lease line their public ip is different this is y company's lease line their public ip so i want this land users when they travel this branch they should get translated with x this branch users when they visit this via this link internet lease line link they should get translated with y and that is called policy net or you can say twice that also so instead of making this in a big setup or this setup i use the existing setup in this existing setup what happened this fellow is visiting this fellow so he is getting translated with 20.1.1.50 and he is if he is visiting this he is getting translated with 20.1.1.51 the same thing will be done in different way like that this is called dynamic twice net okay or you can say different translation depending on the destination it depends on the destination source is always same that is land which destination you want to go that depends so you tell your asa that you are planning to, to go for this destination he will accordingly net it see i am using the same ip address huh? same same network you can you can translate it to some other ip address which is routable okay it should be there or you can now i can show you with some other ip address it will work okay because my asa will do or it will translate it that ip and send it but now i am doing what i am having an existing pool of 20 so i am translating it with this ip because see if i am sending him on r7 or suppose i am sending him in r8 i can do the same thing if i am sending him in r7 i am telling this is the lan users they, if they are going on r7 see that you translate it with 20.1.1.50 if all these users try to go r8 see that you translate them with 20.1.1.51 but in actual uh, scenario you will see what there are two different isp so there might be two different map ip address public ip address and you can accordingly instruct the asa how you are going to visit them okay so same thing i showed you with this now same thing can be done with uh, port numbers also like suppose r3 is visiting this server for say telnet that is 23 again so if he is visiting for a particular service telnet then he will get netted with this ip address that is 20.1.1.50 and suppose he is doing http for this particular server then he will get netted with 20.1.1.51 that means you can also specify a particular server and you can also specify a particular service also that means condition you can give him condition that if this fellow if this all these guys are visiting this server for telnet then net it with this all these guys are visiting for http that means twice net with different set of ip addresses as well as different services also different translation depending on the destination address and port numbers also so the following figure shows the use of source and destination port the host network access a single host for both web service and telnet service so when the host access the server for telnet service the real address can be this it can be anything and huh? this is like example when the host access the same server for web service okay same server for two different services two different ip address or two different server for two different services also you can have two different ip addresses okay so what exactly you have to do see we did like what what we did we we said uh, lan okay like already we object is created lan then we did what server already the server is created we did what public address already it is created only thing is we have to do one more object that is telnet object 
okay so i'll just paste this http object so now in my example i am having two objects one object pointing towards telnet service another object is pointing to our http service two object okay here the object is defined for a particular service so if you see in my example if you see how many objects are there now you have see forget this private host we did it you have map ip that is the public ip or the translated ip which you are looking for so there are two translated ip 50 and 51 there is a single host lan pc you can specify the network also whole network whole network okay then you specified the two servers that is 10.10 and 10.0 and now you specified the services also two services that is telnet and ww so let's assume that we want to send this fellow on a particular service or on a particular this thing for telnet service we'll bring that statement back okay what was the statement so and so so dynamic but this time we have to add at the end we have to add the service also what is the name of the service telnet object no for server 1 we will add telnet and for server 2 service telnet object incomplete command okay and the same will use acha uh, so many times what happen when you specify the service no he will ask the real because you can change the service also like for example i showed you in port redirection no you can change the number also the 23 can be changed to 2323 also so you want the same yes i want the same number in translation okay and for server 2 okay we want service and then we want http object and the same we want in the translation also so when i say show run nat see what i did i need to remove this two statement which was there created earlier so inside dmg source dynamic lan pc is the source map ip map ip 2 destination static server 1 server 2 service telnet object and http object so let's send this guy first to 10.10 for telnet session good so excellent see so he is going for telnet session it should get translated with 20.1.1.50 who is going 10.3 it should get translated with 50 so when i go on r5 and see who
I can say 50. Now the same guy goes to R6, but we need to activate here. IP HTTP server. Telnet. 10.1.11.80. Not here. We go here and do 80. Next server. Show CONN detail. So 192 is visiting. Show excellent. You can see when he visited for Telnet, he got translated with 50. When he visited for HTTP, he got translated with 51. Okay. Can you see 23? 23 means you gave two times no that object. So first is the real one, second one is the mapped one. So real is also 23, mapped one is also 23. First time we gave 80, the second time also he was asking. So we gave repeated the command no HTTP object. So you can change also if you if you want to hide. Last time I showed you port redirection. If you want to hide, people should not come to know our internet. That we can do it when we when we do R3 visiting R7 and R3 visiting R8. R3 visiting R7 get translated with visiting for telnet. So I want the translation should be double three double three. If R3 visit R8 for HTTP, I want eight 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 eight. That is beneficial when you send your traffic over internet to some other location that will be more useful if you want i can show you that practical also next lecture okay so in this case if you see when say okay so he was out i think This connection they will not show, but at least you can see here the translation 20.1.1.51. Suppose if this fellow do server 1, see server 1 is already guided for telnet, okay, like R4. Let's see. Huh? And he tried to do HTTP. We need to enable first. He is going with 51. Not responding. Show run. Night. Initially, it will not show. I don't know. Because see, you have strictly given the instruction that LAN PC when try to access server 1 for telnet, then only you 
use this map type when lan pc try to do this particular so next time we'll change the scenario and see okay i hope you understood what is twice nat this is called this is called what i will send you this sheet okay where all everything is mentioned what we did today also i will send you with diagram so you can just go by the diagram and the configuration and you can understand if you still have doubts you ask me on monday okay to so just go through this sheet i have updated if more net example also there i'll upgrade here with the diagram okay and with the initial configuration so you have two days you see it <coughs> if you have any doubt you ask me <coughs> okay <coughs> and i will try to emulate if any other nets are there also i will try to emulate and show in practical okay so today we'll end here only because lot of people are missing okay i hope you guys understood mirza siva tushar okay good night yeah. happy new year to you guys uh enjoy your weekend bye take care i will send you the recording and the text file okay bye bye yeah thank you